let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and call the meeting to order at six eleven. <clears throat> I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of July twenty fifth, two thousand seventeen. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Mm-hmm. Hearing none. Mm-hmm. All, all those in favor of approving the minutes from July twenty fifth, two thousand seventeen, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. <coughs> motion passes. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Hmm? Hearing none, uh, I'll entertain a motion to suspend the rules and move to item number six on the agenda. Members of the public? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of uh, taking the uh, agenda out of order, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? Motion passes. So, I believe it's Mr. Woodruff. No. Yep. Okay. I, you wanted to speak to us. I did. No, I don't know exactly where to start. It's been going on for a long time, so I think I'll start with the latest episode. Okay. <laughs> and work my way backwards. Uh, I just... I'm having a problem with the way my land is being treated by the land crew. I mean by the road crew. I go for it. Um, and the latest episode happened on Friday. Uh, they were up cleaning out culverts, I assumed. And uh, I wasn't around, but um, saw, you know, where it had been done. And I went out and looked at it and I said, well, this is a little strange way to clean out culverts, but all right, let's see what happens. <laughs> I went out the next morning and looked at it. What had been happened, what happened was they dug a hole at the down end of the culvert, which is on my side of the road. About two and a half, one and a half to two feet deep. And about six feet wide across and made a pond for me. I don't really want a pond right there. And there's no way for it to drain. It's full water right now, and I've got a wonderful photograph here to show you guys what it looks like today. That's good. Not yet. And the big pile of mud on the right-hand side of the photograph is where the original ditch is supposed to run down through their natural gravity north to south. So about 50 feet between that big hole and my driveway now is undrainable because he built himself a dam there. It's like a beaver moved in. (laughs) And uh, there's no place for the water to go. There was no cleaning out of the ditch. They just dug a big hole. Uh, It doesn't make any sense. I I was out there with him Friday. You weren't there? Well, you need to take a look at it, because it is lousy. I will. And, um... So you're on, you're on West Thompson, right? Uh, up on Windham Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Do we want Almost to, to south. Uh, why don't we let Kurt see it so he knows what we're speaking about? <laughs> and, um... Uh, I'll, I'll follow you up after we leave here. It pisses me off. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't look like rainwater. It, it is rainwater. There's no, that's the other thing. There's no water coming through the culvert whatsoever. That's all rainwater, and it's in the swamp. And I, I, I don't know if I look at it. I don't know what they did. I have no idea. <laughs> well, that's what they did. And then they, up on the other, up the road just a little ways, there's another culvert, which I'm not going to complain about. I mean, they did the same kind of a thing, but less less drastic, you know, they cleaned it out. And, but I guess my point is, there's no attempting to make anything better when they get done. They just make a mess and go off and leave it. You know, so now, if I want to walk through there, I've got to stumble over holes and through water. It's not the old days when we had Mr. Sleeper and probably Urban's dad up there Cleaning things up when they got done. So, did they, did, yeah, it's it's explain to me. Does the cover? Do the covers actually work now? I mean, was there was there an attempt to clean them out? I think they always. I think they always did. Work. They always did work. Okay. <laughs> I don't think there was a problem. I think naturally, 
yeah, you want to clean out culverts to make sure they work? I have absolutely no problem with that. But in that particular instance, what they needed to do was clean the ditch out. I'll come up after the Okay. They need to clean the ditch out so the water can go somewhere. So don't right. make a culvert work by digging a big deep hole <laughs> and plugging up the, like I say, the natural lay of the land. Um, it's got nowhere to go anymore. And, and I don't believe that that's the only spot in the town that that's happened, where they dug on the low side of the of the culvert and did nothing on the high side of the culvert. It isn't because I've got one that's exactly the same. Um, mine, the one right before Shirts. You don't think they've cleaned both end up? No, I don't think so. The one right before Shirts. Hey, me. The one right before Shirts. Well, the, the inlet end, the upper end, the head end, is actually clear enough. That culvert runs at a pretty good slope downhill, so you got to dig down pretty deep to clean it out at the bottom end. And actually, you got to get onto the property pretty deep to clean out the ditch. But what they did is they dug something the size of this table, a little, a little smaller, maybe the size of a grave. They dug it down pretty damn deep. What I've got right there now is a mosquito pond yep. that's got that much more to fill in before it kind of goes out into the swamp. But what they did do is they didn't leave the dirt behind, which I do appreciate. They put it in a dump truck and hauled it away. Because sometimes it, it just ends up on the property and it's it just mud. Yes. Yeah, I know. And I'm, I'm glad yeah, that they, no, they, 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 they scooped it up. That pile there, they scooped it up and dump trucked it away. And that was either Friday or Thursday or whenever that one. I can't remember. But it was uh, it was Ed and Ed and Bob, Bob and Ed on the uh, Ed with the back going. He actually did a pretty good job. At least they Bob at least hauled the stuff away. So. Yeah. Anyway, but I've got the same thing, and that's that's. But it's just you know, it's a ditch, it, not a ditch. It's just a pool this size, which is just going to fill up with sediment. I mean, it's just going to. Well, that's as far as it could reach, or yeah, yeah that shorter, is, shorter than as far as it could reach. Right. Yeah. Right. So. So did you have something else that you wanted um, to? Do? Yeah. Um. So to go back a little bit further now into the springtime, I own. I don't know how well. I must own a quarter of a mile of road frontage here at least, more than a quarter of a mile. A lot of it is steep bank. And the road has, you know, over the years, because there's a road there, trees have been dying off, you know, and, and I cut them up and bring them home when I can and, you know, burn them up because I burn firewood. And, uh, you know, they've been tending to come up and put fill down over the bank, which I don't have a real argument against. I mean, you have to do that. But I will maintain that they're way past the original right away of the road, because my original line is probably closer to the middle of the road than anywhere else at this point. There was a stone wall underneath that road. Urban can remember it. Big stone wall, big maple trees and all. We had to give up when they, when they rebuilt that road way back. And uh, I, I don't have a problem with that. But what I do have a problem with is I get down there in the middle of the night because a tree fell down in the road and somebody's knocking on my door. And I go down and I uh, fire up my tractor and that guy and I clean that thing all up and I push it off the edge of the road so it's perfectly safe. It's off four or five feet away from the blacktop. And before I can get that cut up, they come up with a loader and pushed it down over this wicked steep bank. So I can't get to it anymore. And they've done that twice this spring. <clears throat> and not only did they do that, but the neighbor's big giant rotten maple tree fell down across the road. They came up with a dump truck and the loader. And instead of picking that thing up, put it in the dump truck and cart it somewhere down over my bank. I just feel like I'm being abused up there. I do own that land. <laughs> I pay my taxes. Nobody has to come looking for me to get my tax money. I pay it every year on time. And um, they need to recognize that people actually own the land they're using. I, I will. I can understand that. There's no doubt. Um, so that, you know, I mean, I'd like to have that ditch fixed. I, again, I'm just got to go back. We've owned that land since about 1880, I believe. 
my memory doesn't go back. Let's go that far. <laughs> Yeah, but Irv's does. <laughs> but, it, but, it, but it does go back to when people cared what they did to your land. And if they had to cut trees or if trees fell down or whatever, they usually, I remember many times, our yard would be full of wood that they had to pick up over there, cutting these big maples again that were had to had to be a part of the road, and they lug them down the house for us so we could deal with them. And that's the way it ought to be, as far as I'm concerned. Instead of bulldozing a, a nice ash tree that fell down maybe a month ago, instead of putting out way down over this steep bank, they should have just cut it in lengths they could deal with with that water, brought it up, and dumped it where I could get to it. Because, you know, we all eat the wood around here. And um, so that, that's my, that's my uh, this summer and last winter experiences. Um, my other one goes back, I don't know, five years, six years maybe, when the road was resurfaced. Nobody ever came and dressed the shoulders. I did dress the shoulders. Never did. You stopped about way before my property line never came up through. And here's a picture of the soda can. That soda can is tickling five inches. <laughs> and that's, I've been dealing with that for all those years. Hmm. My grandkids can't ride bicycles out there because they get killed. And, I, uh, I, I, I did stop there. But I nope, I didn't. never did. And uh, I mean, I even had a bicycle at that time, and I could have. We got enough traffic up there down, you can't get off the road. So I sold my bicycle and said to heck with it, and my grandkids came and come down and visit me on their bicycle. Yeah, it's a mountain dew can. No, it's not. It's a can of Canada. So that's my issues. I guess I just want to be treated like I matter. Uh, I feel like I'm locked on every step up there. Well, I mean, you never said anything, and I'm, I'm sorry. We got some guys up there, and I don't mean it for them. To... Well, I, I actually mean not to you directly because you're using that here, but I have said stuff. Uh, I actually suggested to the fellow that drives the dump truck, is that it? Yeah. I said, you know, there's a number of trees down through there where you guys want to dump fill. And if you dump fill, they're, they're going to die pretty soon anyways. If you wanted to cut them down and lug them up because they're leaning over the road, I said, I can't cut them. If you wanted to cut them down and lug them up to my house, I'd be happy. But I don't want you to cut them and bulldoze them down over the bank. What did he tell you? He said he would tell Kurt. How we come back? <laughs> Obviously, it sounds like at this point in time there needs to be a meeting of the minds between you and Mr. Woodruff and to come to some resolution on this newest problem. That's why I said I'd go up there after the meeting. Well, I'll, unfortunately, you're going to be here a while tonight. Okay, I won't. Okay, I'm just, I'm just suggesting that you might want to make some kind of an arrangement to speak to him mm -hmm. tomorrow or, or whatever because uh, there's a lot on the agenda tonight. But yes, that we need to get that the issue, yeah, the current issue addressed. addressed. Yep, yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks for coming down. Have a good evening. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. So then moving on to the highway department. Yeah. Okay. First thing we're going to start with is the transportation. Yeah. And I will say that I was out there today checking to see if the signs were up. Noting council residents only, permit only, the hours, etc. Um, and as I was there, I had two individuals from out of town drive up and deposit their recyclables into, or try to deposit their recyclables into the the bins. 
One of which I managed to run off before he got it accomplished. The other one um, I did not because he was already done when I arrived. And I also had a third person show up uh, who was a Townsend resident, but off hours. I, so, I agree with you. And I block those things and people... They're cutting the zip ties. I know. <laughs> they're, they're cutting the zip ties. Um, it appears that at least one of them can be secured with a bar. It looks like it. It looks like a raw. Does it have a run through? But it changes every time they pick them up. We get. We Does get, it? We get, you know, we get some right. dumpsters yeah. that don't have doors. We get. I mean, the, the I, I, I have replaced those. I even bought black ones that are a little ruggeder. And, yep. And they cut them, and I, cause I thought they were just slamming the doors open. Nope. And them. With nope. regard to signs, we do have a banner, four foot by six foot banner, which announces the um, hours. And the other signs will say Townsend residents by permit only. Um, and hopefully, I mean, with the hours, and facility only open when it's open and attended, basically. Um, those will probably go on the sand and salt shed behind the, behind the dumpsters for recycling. Um, but that banner I took up on Friday, left it there, haven't had a chance to get it out of that family. I'll try to get it up tomorrow. This well, is going to be nailed it to the wall. But those will be the hours, and I did have a call on the hours. I'm okay. just wondering, is it getting to the point where it's easier to not deal with this, or is it easier to just keep dealing with it every single meeting and every single day and every single week and uh, month? And to, not, to not deal with it, it's going to well, be no, a, I mean, a we're minimum just getting transition. To the point. Yeah, yeah, but we're, we left the last meeting, Craig, and I went by, and there's a guy sitting there throwing his stuff in, and it's I like know. we're not talking hours. It just goes on and on. It's the like gate's closed. Yep. They, they, they jump the gate. They cut the zip ties. Um, Arnold doesn't always see who's coming in. Well, maybe he needs to get out of the office. Well, he wasn't even there today. You know, that, no, it was he, before that, he was, that was an issue. It was before he, before before he shipped. I was there at 1 o'clock today. And so the one thing that I wanted to say to you more than anything is if the crew, since you guys are in and out of there all day long. I have told you. I mean, literally throw them off the property. I tell people, but we're not there all the time. I understand, right. but if you are, throw them off. Because the word's got to get out. We are not going to pay to haul recyclables out of the town of Newfane. We're just not. Mm -hmm. One of the cars today was marked um, Brattleboro Pipeworks. But, uh, it, again, it doesn't matter. There is absolutely no reason, and I refuse to have myself or any member of this board, needless to say, sit out there and patrol the dump area uh, during the closed hours. If that's where we are, I, I won't disagree with Rob. We might need to consider shutting this down because, quite frankly, it's getting to the point where the expenses... We're paying for other towns. Well, it's, are, are it's far, becoming untouchable. Exactly. Are far exceeding this town's ability to pay. And unless the, the members, of the people that utilize the transfer station in Townsend are willing to pay $10 a bag to be able to afford for us to take all the new fame recyclables, we, we can't, just can't do it. Yeah, we can't take our own town, the people in our town with businesses, we can't take their recyclables. That's exactly right. Right, exactly. But we can, it, I have a problem with that. No, we can't, obviously, build a new thing. But yes, I just, I wanted to just let everybody know. Well, we can build whoever we want, yeah, whether there we is a, paid for it or not. There is an ordinance. It's been in effect back in 78. That any trash brought across the town line, you can be fined. Well, well, I mean, we need to look into that. Well, yeah, but recycling isn't trash according to well, the state now. That That's may so. be according to the state, but yeah. we're not to take anything brought uh, across I, the town line. Right. Then how do you prove it if it's, if it's not anything with a name or zip code or yeah, there was kind of fingerprint dusting all bottles and cans and paper? Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was right there one day when I was in, in this car. I'd seen it a couple of times. And I said to the guy, "Where you live? Well, West Townsend." I said, "You what?" I live in West Town. I see a post office box in West Town, but you come out of South Window. I said, I can tell you right where you live in the schoolhouse up there. I said, get rid of it this time, but don't bother to come back. I agree. I think it surprised him that I knew where the heck he'd come from. Well, again, that's why we paid for the hang tags now. If we can get right. people to show up only when it's open, then those hang tags have to be, have to be, and, and again, it has to be enforced at that. But there's no way you're going to stop it all. And, and as Rob's pointed out, as everybody's pointed out, people are going to jump the fence and cut the zip ties. If they aren't going to do that, they're just going to leave it inside the gate. 
you know, in a bag next to the dumpster. Yeah, I mean, some people don't cut the zip ties in bags. Right, they leave it on the ground. Okay. Right, I've seen that every time I drive by. There's something usually sitting there. Now the so, cameras that we got, they should be picking it up. Yeah, right? they should be. Should be. Long. Go check them. Well, there again, you know, that's that's the point. I just wanted to to let everybody know I went out innocently enough to just check to see if the signs were up, and that's what I saw. So we need we have an issue, and yep. it's a huge one because we're generating much more in the way of recyclables than we ever did before, mm -hmm. and that can only mean we're taking recyclables from other places. Period. Right. right. So moving on, the next thing. I'm going to look you square in the face and ask you politely, what's going on with the network in the I'm door? confused. Did you read my email? I always thought that you're just as confused as I am. Okay. Here to be. Last week you told me to call Megan Brunk yep. about the 20% and Wyndham Regional Planning Commission, which I did. I called Megan Brunk and I called Wyndham Regional Planning Commission about the 20% and about oh. our inventory network. She says we are good to go, where our network inventory is up to date and everything until the end of this year, and then we're, it's, they're starting to recycle again on our culvert inventory and stuff, which the Wyndham Regional Planning Commission is gonna do over when they do that grant for the X64, which will cover all the aspects of this inventory network again. So Megan Brunk said, we are good on our inventory network. So I had her email me, I forwarded it to Craig. Yep. And I said, and my email said, I'm confused because I was confused because I was originally told or understood that we weren't. We went through this last time. Right. So that's why I called her up and I called her to reach out. I have the paperwork that I signed in front of me. The paperwork says, and I believe you filled this out in conjunction with with the room regional. Is Matt that not correct? Matt. Okay, so it was Matt now. <coughs> Anyway, it's for a VTrans grant, and it says, or it says, describe how the grant funds will be spent. The town will use this opportunity to upgrade our culvert and bridge inventory, as well as performing our road erosion inventory. Right. This will help us conform to the state water quality regulations. Exactly. I signed this last year on April 27th. Right. Now I'm being told, and then I was told that we're not eligible for, for uh, a 10% uh, match on Bridge 42 because it was out of out of date and we weren't in compliance and now suddenly we're back in compliance and I'm not sending any more paperwork until somebody gets a straight answer. Well, I got a straight answer. I forwarded the email to him. The only straight answer is we, 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 we're good for what? What was it? Until the end of the year? Until the end of the year then our call was before it runs off. Then why the devil didn't somebody either from VTrans or from um, Windham, or not, uh, Windham Regional, Windham Regional yeah, tell, us, tell us when we submitted that application for the Bridge 42 grant that we were good to go, that we did not need to take to pay 20% as opposed to 10. I don't know. Because the right hand don't know what the left one's doing. Well, the thing is, we did a we need a network inventory, culvert and, and bridge inventory in 2012. There are minutes to that effect. Yep, and that good. expired in 2015. You updated I the updated. thing in 2015. Apparently, apparently expires in uh, 2018, as you're saying now. So that has to be, but that's just the culverts and bridge side. The network inventory with, with cost projections and all that, we did in 2006. I thought that was a five year ending in 2011 12, but then I thought Irene made everybody go out and look at every little pebble and every little ditch there was in that in because of the because of the damage. Everything got upgraded. Everything got assessed. Everything got photographed. Everything got reviewed by FEMA and ANR. So basically I thought we had the network inventory done in 2012, which would expire um, whenever that expired. And theoretically we've been out because we were supposed to have run out um, two years ago. And nothing's really happened since in the, in the time since then. Um, up until now. So um, anyway, when that grant proposal came through from, from uh, uh, Wyndham Regional, it was supposed to, in my opinion, my thoughts were, it, it says, you know, cost reductions and all that. It's supposed to be more than just an Act 64. Right, it, right. It, and it, I know that, and, 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 and I know that you talked to Matt Dan about that. And, and well, he, and he's since gone. Yeah. So that's what I call. But what Jeff told us uh, in that email that I got that confused the hell out of me, we had at the last meeting, 
Well, I said, no, you guys are basically good to go and they're going to be doing the erosion control. They really don't need you, but you're going to drive around with them and they'll help put in this in the maps. And it's going to be one day of uh, touring Townsend and taking pictures and doing uh, GPS and then it's going to be another week or two weeks, you know, on their, in, on their, on their end right, so, with the computers. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, that's the email, right? So it would be well, one of one email from Detroit Airport. But one of one of the issues, one of the issues is in the in the original grant form. I think it says you've got until December thirty first, twenty eighteen, to get this done. In the grant form that came through, it, no, says, it says October thirty first. That's contracts. You're talking the contracts. I'm sorry, contracts. Right. But did he say he made a mistake on that? And then he sent one through uh, two weeks ago, or one more now, probably three weeks, a month ago. Saying, it? saying that was Jeff Nugent, yeah. uh, saying that it was December 31st, 2018. I kicked that back saying we need this inventory done quicker than that because we're stuck at this 20% thing. He said, whoa, that was a typographical error. Sorry about that. And he right. changed it to 2017 and said that all the work would be done by December. Right. And then he called me and he said we're going to get together this fall. And do it all yeah, this and fall. try to do it this fall. Once the are gone, but when, we were talk we were, when we were talking at town meeting, they were going to try to get it done before June. Remember that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so my question is, so do we have a network inventory or don't we? Thank you. Yes, we do. Are we going to have one? Are we going to be compliant enough that next year the select board can sign the compliance yes, certificate we and we, we can apply for, for grants that we only have to pay 10%? 10 yes, we will. You're absolutely I'm certain. Positive. Can we see it? I called Megan and I called, I, have it. I called Megan and I called Linda Rico. We will be in compliance. Can we see the network inventory as it sits right now today? As far as jobs to be done and stuff like that. As far as are we in compliance? Show me on paper. I don't have it on paper. It would be Winter Region. Who has it? Winter Region. Winter Region. We need to get it. Thank you. We need to see it. And as, as far as that, because I'm still I'm still seriously concerned with the fact mm -hmm. that you have two different agencies working on this, telling you two different things. You're yeah. signing you're sending contracts with Wyndham Regional to do work that evidently we didn't get a grant to perform, and the grant we, that we got to perform the work that we needed to be done now isn't going to be done, and it just keeps going in a circle, and it's going down the drain. Well, if this work gets done this fall, like you promised us, with the Act 64 water quality and the culvert inventory and the bridge inventory, it will cover us all. Are we absolutely certain the bridge and culvert is going to be done this fall as well? Yes, it will be done. By them? By them. Because that's not the contract that I signed. No, nope, that's what we told me. And it should be on one of the emails. Mm, I don't have anything to that effect on any of the emails no, no. that I've seen. No. Um, but and, but I, I just want to make will, sure... I this, will have an email and forward to it. Well, we need, we need some kind of documentation that this is uh, what's going to happen. Yeah. Just because, again, I've signed two contracts, three contracts, actually. And now I have no idea yep. what's being done and when. It's got three different dates on it. It's got. All right. All right. So that takes care of that one. Um, now, on to the hazard trees and yep. the DE bill. Did you explain? Yeah, and I did exactly what you told me. We talked about last meeting. I called them up. They said they will work with us for, uh, for a whole day, charge us for five hours, and give us three hours because of the time they screwed up before. We just, they just wish we'd pay for the full eight hours that they did before, but the three, the five hours next time will only be charged for five hours for the three. Eight hours work. We're gonna get, hours. we're gonna give us eight hours, charge us for five, right? Because of the screw up of the last time. You could just pay that bill for the eight hours, the next bill will be for five hours. But they will work eight. So we're taking a sixteen hundred dollar bill, and not dropping it down. As I, they sent a, a credit memo through the day. Exactly. Taking a sixteen hundred dollar bill, not dropping it to fourteen as they offered, but going to leave it at sixteen hundred, and, and then they're going to and then, work, and then add a thousand to it, basically five hours at two hundred dollars an hour. And that's bill will be for a thousand. Yeah, so it'll be twenty six hundred. That's what we talked about last meeting. That's what I did. I called them up and explained it to them. Is there any questions or something? And also the last meeting you talked about. The highway crew being the flaggers. So we are going to flag for them and we will help them do more. We will push them right along. And if, if you want, we'll do it on August. I think it was the 17th, is on the 17th, yeah. Yeah, August 17th. We'll go for five. 
Okay, that's great. Yep. Any further questions on what's going on with the trade? And you know exactly what you want to accomplish on that day? Yes. And it's eight hours worth of work? Yes. And you'll be there to manage it? Yes, we'll be there to manage it. And, well. and this, we don't have to talk about this issue anymore? No. <laughs> No. You mean well, we actually put one to bed? I'm so impressed. I'm waiting for the Chris Angel letter. We oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true. We haven't gotten that yet either. Okay. Um, okay. Um, then moving on to the trees on the common. Trees on the common. Uh, yeah. Me first. Me first. All right. Go ahead. Uh, first thing I want to do is if we want ask you if you have any idea who hit the little dedicated tree. In front of the school in the parsonage, the little tiny brand new tree. Just no, no idea. Somebody hit it with a plow because it's got a scar that long. Is that the one that was supposed to be planted in Bill Eckert? It was planted in Bill Eckert's name, which has got a pretty good plow. It's got a pretty good thing. Because the way it's facing where it's been hit, somebody had to hit it head on. They, the, the, you couldn't have backed into it, you had to have hit it head on. No well, Nobody would notice it before now with a plow. <laughs> I haven't spent a couple of minutes while since while they got the plows on. Well, it, until you were walking around for fair days on the common, nobody noticed the fact that there's a scar that faces essentially out toward an angle toward the church, that the whole side of that tree has got a scar that long on it. And it's, it's, a, it's old, it's an old scar, it's not a new scar. So you don't know anything about that. No. Then, okay. Um, and then as far as the general health of the trees in the common, the fact that um, you need to say we well, you cut the one down, cut and thank you down. for getting that one down before the before the fair. That's but we right. have two or three others that are in serious distress out there. Sure. Um, there's been a lot of discussion about the trees. One of the things that's come to light is there's a fungus that is impacting the maple, and that some of them will make it, some of them won't. But it's also come to our attention multiple times from multiple different sources. And one of the issues with the trees in the common is the salt. Salt. And the fact that we're, we're plowing salt essentially onto the common and a fair amount of it. Um, I think it might be to the board's benefit to have a discussion about potentially making common road a salt reduction area. But also, this, this isn't the first time this has come up because before, Kurt was foreman, and we told him to truck that stuff off instead of pushing it on to common. And they, what happened to that deal? You don't truck any of it off. Now you just push it over the cement barriers. Are those piles there? When you're plowing, you... Oh, I, I never truck those off. No, I never truck those off. You did when they first started, because it wouldn't get on your case, and you trucked it down in the pit. I don't remember trucking them off. You did, because I know we kept after you until you did. Uh, no, I don't remember. But I think it is. If you want to truck out, I will truck it out. That's not no, but well, I said, the thing is, all that salt's going on the common. And, it, and but, we also, to, but listen, also, we don't, the state goes around the common. When they turn around, they'll go around two or three times to help us out. And they'll salt too. So I, I, well, I don't okay, so between you salting salt. and they salting, that means that salt. But I will relay this. I really, I will relay this because they do that well, also. We, we put up a sign that says salt reduction area. I mean, it would, it would be beneficial for the common, um, particularly the whole school common road area, if it was just sand. Because quite frankly, the schools aren't operating. If it's severe enough weather that they really need salt on that road, the schools aren't in session usually. So it's going to be to everybody's benefit to break the sand off the car as opposed to having the salt killing the trees. I think that's, a, that's worth a discussion, um, to be honest with you. So did you have something about the trees specifically on the common that you wanted to talk to us about? Yeah, because you told me last week to talk to Mr. Finnegan about the trees. Okay, and, well that's next week. And not being so aggressive and stuff like that. That's and do the, the string trim around here. And I did both things for you. I left notes for him because I, I don't know his number. I never see the guy unless he happens to bump into me. So I left notes up there, left a note on a tractor, and he got it because he came to see me and told me he got the notes. Okay, because quite frankly, the, the the trees, particularly that little one that I was just talking about with the scar, has been girdled by the string trimmer. And um, it's already in enough distress as is to... Oh, yes, I told him about it. So. And then we have, all the trees have girdling on where he's gotten really aggressive with the string trimmer. 
Well, some of them have been done with the lawnmower, taking the top of the roots off. Yeah, well, that's that's it. The deck of the lawnmower is pretty pretty low, so that any time he goes over the root balls of these trees, he's skimming the I, tops I of the roots it. off. Um, we're we're going to have to watch that because that's just that's again not acceptable. After you tell him what goes on then, is it like we're going to lower it or we're going to raise it or I mean the mower? The damage. When you say the hey, you're mowing the stuff and you're taking the yeah. the roots off. I mean, does it? Well, we, I, I, I understand that you say things to people and like well, you would think Ed and all these other people, but you never get anything. Thing. I mean, you just properly. Well, you would think, but you would also think that if you mowed the lawn, you would weed whack at the same time, and we don't get that most of the time. You would think that you'd blow the grass off the front steps of the town hall, but we don't get that. You would think that you would mow the whole entire ball field, not just the infield and not the outfield, or vice versa. Or just, it goes on and on. It's like, can we just operate like it's a business? And yeah. do, what? What? What do you mean what? what? What part is it run like a business when you're transferring money? When you pay somebody to do a job, it's like a business. Well, in, in that case, I, I really have to outline everything he does when he It's mowing a lawn, Kurt. We're not cutting freaking molecules. It's simple. That's why I, I don't expect to, uh, have to... Have to manage it. Yeah. Well, you should be professional. Last week, I gave the heads up about, last week I gave him a heads up about this and about the thing, so let's see what he does. Well, let's make sure. Oh, make sure you, you just make sure you follow up. Just cut all the trees down and use an after lead whack and we'll just cut right over the stuff. He's got to sound nice and awful lot. Well, I mean, it might be easier. Right. Well, like be proactive it's... instead of reactive about it. I mean, if, if worse comes to worse, we can certainly look at a service to deal with the, the commons as well, as opposed to our own equipment and whatnot. But we, there does have to be some oversight because there has been damage done. And, and the damage was done before, right. and then you told me to tell them. So I okay, then let's move on to the big elephant in the room at the moment, and that's the uh, loader. The loader, yeah. You want to tell us about it? Yeah, the loader windows got broke. Yeah, you think? I know. So, what I'd like to do is put a gate up on the pit. It wasn't so shut. Why was the loader left there? Is it typically, is it left there for the weekend? Sometimes, sometimes not. I mean, most of your equipment is inside the town garage right. all the time. Is it difficult to include the loader in that? No, it's not. So how come? How come there's no gate there? There's never been a gate since. Oh, I, oh, wait a minute. Since, since I've been maybe, here, maybe since you have, yeah, but I, I, have, that. I myself oh, personally oh. have never seen a gate. No, but well, I said before you knew that there was. I'm sure there was, but myself personally have never seen a gate there. I, my, my, I would like to put up a gate, uh, put up no shooting signs throughout the pit, and the. Pit, Windows were not shot. Windows out? No, they didn't. Well, they were all worried about shooting for them. Because there's nobody patrols their brass, nobody picks up their stuff, they shoot. Uh, the neighbors complain about it once in a while. So I they, think they, they should. They were out there shooting at about 2 o'clock on the Sunday. So I don't think they should be shooting more of that. No. In the afternoon. But what's wrong with 2 o'clock in the afternoon? They're not supposed no. to be in the pit shooting. It's private property. Really? I thought it was town property. Well, it is. And but it's private town property. You want to go shoot, shoot skeet on the ball field? Or? We don't Common shoot skeet. Nobody uses the common for anything. She uses <laughs> Anyway, just just to, to the idea of the gate, I have got minutes in my hand from September 2012, and it says uh, Boston reported that gate could be bought to close the gravel pit road, or one the one at the former dump site could be just, could be installed. Discussion as soon how best to limit the nuisance. Created by excessive shooting of firearms at the gravel pit, and the board requested the constables to respond to complaints. That was from 2012. This is now 2017. Mm -hmm. So it's time. Five years ago. It's time. But five minutes never played either. I'm just saying, I, it, it's time to take some kind of action to try to secure that area out there. Be thank God that there well, was not the 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 going to be stop kids from getting in the throng. No, kids are going to get in. No, you had to be one strong kid to break safety glass. But you know, there's only two rocks about that big inside here. Yeah, strong, you have a good arm. Oh then, my good Lord, though. There's only, listen to me, there's only two rocks about this size inside the cab, and there's a ton of rocks that big, literally, that were inside the cab. We cleaned the cab out and vacuumed up all the glass and stuff. No. We took it on the road. Can we help you? No, nothing further. Yep, it's across probably at the church, across the common. But um, yeah, I mean they spent time just smashing. 
They didn't, they didn't damage anything inside the cab. They didn't take the Was tools. there any footprints around it? Oh, they had rain. Yeah, it was pretty well cleaned out. Okay, shit. Was, I called DSP, we went through the whole thing. And they didn't take the chain out of the beautiful chain in there, they didn't take the tools, they just threw right. They just broke it. Well, like I said, you, we should be very thankful that it's not the new machine. I agree. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, out there. And and I, will, I, I will not leave anything in the pit. I but people are shooting at the pit, so we shouldn't have anything down there, which might hit strip yeah, shot. Yeah, people shooting. They want to tour the people throwing the rocks. Well, I, well, I, I don't disagree. I, I, mean, I mean, it's, it's going to be like, you know, you're going to rock throw rocks at something when there's a bunch of people I'm, shooting. I'm just saying, when, when everybody knows the schedule, we work from 6 to 2.30 and we're closed on the weekends, we shouldn't have things out in a gravel pit that can be destroyed by vandals or whatever, especially when people are shooting down there. Granted, they're shooting down the side where the loader's loaded, but the loader might not be there. We've got a garage to keep it in, keep it locked up. I don't know, I'm going to bring all of my guns down and start shooting down there. Cool, go for it. I'm putting signs up. After that you put the, put the gate up, I'm going to walk. We'll go shoot the signs. We'll go shoot the signs. Good job. I'm um, bringing my brass from home, too. Yeah, control your brass, that thing's bad. The, uh, you know, that could be reloaded. One of one of the one of the things that, that came to the forefront as we started looking at the timing on the on the loader and what had happened with it was the fact that uh, you evidently Bob and Ed were doing some tree work and, and ditching on ditching, those, right. those two days. We were all doing tree work on Thursday. Okay. And um, we used the loader to pull um, some stuff out of the back of the truck that we cleaned up. One of the one of the one of the things we noticed was also the fact that uh, on Friday, because it was Friday, there were more hours put in requested for pay by the flaggers than we did had from the road crew. And I'm just a little bit curious how we had flaggers longer than we had you if you were doing the cutting. Friday or Thursday? I'm pretty Either sure. Friday. Hunter six. North was eight and a half hours. Yep. They were eight and a half on Thursday, seven and a half on Friday. We were six on Thursday. Ed went home six for two hours. And I just we cut trees and then did Friday. ditching, but I assume that's Grafton Road. And then Bob and Ed were, I guess, ditching on Friday. Yeah, how are you, like, there's a lot of times where you get through like three quarters of the day and then two hours sick and stuff. Are we, are we like kindergarten sickness or something? Like, I'm going to go to the nurse office because I don't feel good. We get out of the house and have to Ed. Or Anybody, it doesn't probably matter. Probably somebody has an appointment, so it's very fun. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't need flaggers to, to do symptom book road by my house or whatever else. So you want the guys to take whole days off or get something done, take a half a day off? I don't know, you get done at 2.30, that leaves usually doctors are open from 8 to 5 or no, something, 9 to 5. Can't get an appointment and just don't leave. Well, it, it was, it was just... Right, so we'll just bite the bullet on it and call it close enough. It was, it was just curious. What's the difference? They're, they're taking their time and they're using What do you mean, what's the difference? The difference is that if you're the foreman, you should know the difference between taking time off. You go to the doctor at noon or go to the doctor at 2.30 to 5, one or the other. I mean, huh. I don't know. I don't know if the doctor makes appointments all the time that you want. Well, usually they give you your option of time. I don't know. Uh, do you need to shoot down here or not? No, I, I was okay. just looking at Steve. If somebody wants to use their time, though, what's wrong with them using their time? If their time the point is, can you put a whole day in is the only point. Can I For a doctor's appointment? I, I, can I put a whole day in? Yeah, I usually don't work. I usually work through lunch. I, I'm not that I want to pay for you guys. If you want to go through rate. the rest, of, we'll go through and the I hours, usually do. and we'll pick and figure out the day, vacation days and the sick days and all that, and we'll let you know how many times you work a complete week without sick days and vacation days. Our vacation days, sure. You know, I got, I got a lot of sick time that I haven't taken. That's fine. It would be nice if we got like one week's notice. Usually most places, I don't think that you just all of a sudden roll the dice and say, today I'm going to take the day off. Usually you have to call somebody and say, hey, in uh, and a they, week from now or something, like, we're like going to let Thursday, you know Like Thursday, on. Ed asked me at the end of the week. He said, can I have Thursday? I leave early Thursday. And I said, sure. We're going to be doing trees and we can go ditching because there's a trouble spot up by Acton Hill. It all worked out fine. I don't see what the big problem is, to be honest with you. There's not a huge problem, it's just it happens so much that it's like... If they have time, they have that time over. They're not taking time without paying. The, the town is not losing any money by doing that. If you can't get to understand what we're saying, then don't worry about it. 
So when do you want him to take the time off? It would be nice to see. I don't care when he takes it off. We can't take it off in the winter time. We don't take it off. He takes it off in the springtime, but not if we have mud. If it starts snowing in the fall, we don't take it off then. Just do whatever you want. Take the farm off. The uh, we have time over. Is what I'm saying. The I don't even remember now where I was going with all this. Flaggers. Uh, well, yeah, the fact that there was, there was a, um, a different amount of time that was put in for the flaggers versus the time that you guys said you were doing the, doing the work. Thursdays, Thursdays, well, that was the flagger. We worked straight through. And after Ed left, Bob and I worked straight through. So it was eight and a half hours for the flaggers. Okay. So they didn't take a lunch. They, were, they did not take a okay. lunch. Now, the uh, politics that, that makes up the difference. They, they, they were waiting for me up on the pull-off up there. I pull on the pull-off. We talked for probably... Five minutes and then we went and they set up their signs and stuff like that. Now I oh, you do have, Kip Martin, I to Kip Martin. I do have I do have a question about the flaggers. You said that the last thing that you're having a difficult time getting them, yes, engaging and, them. And those two days are the first time I can get them since I've been starting to call way back in the beginning okay. of May. So this wasn't something that was already in the queue that you just managed to be able to I find. Just to managed to get them. So okay. we took down all the trees we had marked at Athens or plus some and did stuff on grass and road and so I hadn't cleaned Wyndham Hill culverts, but obviously I had to go Oops. check those out. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. So did you have that's that's my list for you? I think. Did you have something for us? Yeah, I'm just gonna go over the list that I had last week, our last meeting. You told me to call Dean, um, Dean, which I did. Uh, Basin Brothers, and I called Springfield. They want to know if the contract was signed and returned to them. Basin. <laughs> Did we have a contract? We didn't actually have a contract. We had an estimate, but uh, right. you called them, told them they got the bid. I called, left a message because there wasn't anybody there at nine o'clock or whenever that was, uh, Thursday morning, I guess it was. Um, I didn't see any place to sign, but I'll pull the. I'll that, pull that's the what they told me. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll pull it out. Yeah. No, right. that, that was I can, just an estimate that we got them. Yeah. It was an it's estimate. We can, get, we can get it. We can get it. contract with it because the guy says there's. All right. Yeah. Anyways, you might as well call them and. and um, I can make sure call them and we can get something fixed. Uh, I went and looked at the fire pond by myself. So we, Allie. Allie. It, it is our gravel coming like like far. Well, we don't know what. Far. And I think it would happen, I know it happened when that culvert. Remember that culvert collapsed and then washed out the road? And it just, that's when it happened. Because that's the only time it's it's washed out right now. I just say, that's why it brought it up. Something that didn't usually happen. I remember that culvert collapsed. And yeah. Yeah, so I did go look at the fire pond. I, I can go talk to Ross about it. Is there something that can be done to, to mitigate what's going on? Uh, we put in a new culvert and shored up the bank, so I, unless it washes out again, if it, it, wash, it, it washed out again, it would happen. It took, when it took the road, it's probably where most of the material came from. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, you talked about using. Um, Roundup on the stairs and stuff. Yeah, yeah, we uh, he did, but we're not supposed to use it. Municipalities cannot use it for any herbicide without a license application, so we're not going to use that again. I was called up by. Are you getting for real? I'm getting for real. You can't use Roundup on the front steps. No sir, no. Nope. Holy shit! I'm going to have to go find something else to do. No. Nope. No. Well, in the case of the weeds that are coming out from the cracks, you can probably salt them. <laughs> that should probably take care of them. In the case of the ivy out back, we could probably use calcium chloride to a pump sprayer. <laughs> the ivy out back probably just needs to be cut. Maybe we can get Mike to cut it next time through a spring trimmer or something like that. So that's growing all over the stairs. I, it's going to be a slip and fall. Uh, going back to the loader, I did do the BSP um, case number to. Yep, it's all called in. They've, they've uh, uh, acknowledged it. We have a. a an insurance adjuster, they're going to be trying to follow up if we have any more information. I have a contact name, I assume they're going to call. I would assume that they'll interface with the state police in their report. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything to do with it, I don't think you have anything to do with it unless they call and ask questions. Right. But they have all the intake information, they know what happened, and they could link to uh, the BSP uh, 17B105028 report number that you gave me. So um, hopefully that's sufficient. And if they send an adjuster out, I uh, wouldn't assume it's going to be fixed this week. Did you take the machine back to the crash? Yes, I, we brought the generator down there and vacuumed everything up. The so it's, it's we, even back, we even grabbed back in the ground because there was piles of glass everywhere. What are we going to do with it? Um, 
vacuum into everything out there. So it's all going to be thrown away and it's back at the shop. Last night we did go down there and cover it up and With the tarp? Huh? With the tarp, tar yeah. Bob went to his house and got a small tarp to cover it, yeah. All right. Um, I assume it's once we hear from uh, the insurance company with their adjuster, or whatever, then we'll make decisions as to what to repair and how to repair it and what I mean, they may not send somebody down. I mean, if they, uh, I mean, I don't know, I don't know what the state police report, but it's pretty easy to visualize. I mean, it's a long trip, it's a four hour round trip. Yeah, they, just windows. Do it they may just say get an estimate and send it to us. But anyway, they, the ball's kind of in their court to contact us and tell us what they need. Right. So. Because we're not in a position right now to be able to buy the new one. Um, no. we've, we've only gotten yeah, the first right. first quarter taxes in. We missed the spring deadline on the loans. We couldn't even buy that money in right. anticipation. So, that's when so at this point in time, the earliest we could even have a new machine here was is going to be probably town meeting roughly. Right. And so it's going to have to go through the winter. It's going to be and if we're going to trade the machine, we got to have windows in it. Absolutely. <laughs> well, it's going to be cold this winter with salt. If you're not, if you don't have windows in. I'm not using much salt because we reduced salt now. So. Okay. So, I always said the comment. Oh, comment. <laughs> We're going to stand in the comments. So. We're good to go. Is there anything else anybody has that, that you have questions about or uh, addressed? Thank That's you very much. And, then, and please do follow up with uh, Mr. Woodruff to see what's going on. I will. Thank you. Hey, I, I, didn't say, I, I did just that. Uh -huh. um, it just irritates me that that, 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 that happened. I can yeah. understand. There's no reason for that. Thank you. Thanks, sir. All right, then let's go back up and pick up the words. All right, let's get back. Take a motion to pay. Check one number one out of the payroll in the amount of $10,556.88. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of paying payroll warrant number one in the amount of $10,556.88 signified by the same line. Aye. Uh, opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Make a motion to pay uh, payroll tax warrant number two in the amount of $4,059.06. Is there a second? Second. second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of paying payroll tax warrant number two in the amount of $4,059.06 signified by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Extensions? Motion passes. Make a motion to pay check warrant number three out of the general fund in the amount of $37,002. Second. Any discussion? I just have a question, Joey. Is that the one that the town's splitting with the fire department? Yeah, I gave the check for 24 seven. Okay, so so this is to That's come the out, of the, tax, right? out of the reserve yeah. that they asked for. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of paying general fund warrant number three in the amount of $37,002, signified to say nine. Aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? Motion passes. Make a motion to pay check warrant number four out of the general fund in the amount of $9,248.26. Is there, a second? Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of paying general fund warrant number four in the amount of $9,248.26 signified by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? Motion passes. Make a motion to pay check warrant number five out of the general fund in the amount of $3,523.55. There second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of paying general fund warrant number five in the amount of $3,523.55 signified by saying no. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions? Motion passes. Make a motion to pay check warrant number seven out of the highway fund in the amount of. We have a six. We'll keep six. Six is also highway. Make a motion to pay check warrant number six. Out of the highway fund, the amount of three thousand seven hundred eighty-one dollars and eighty-nine cents. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none. All those in favor of paying highway warrant number six in the amount of three thousand seven hundred eighty-one dollars and eighty-nine cents signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Abstentions? Motion passes. Make a motion to make check warrant number seven out of the highway fund in the amount of $1,044.04. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of paying highway warrant number seven in the amount of $1,044.04 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? Motion passes. Make a motion to pay check warrant number eight out of the equipment fund in the amount of $3,152.16. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of paying um, equipment warrant number eight in the amount of $3,152.16 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? Motion passes. Make a motion to pay check warrant number nine out of the highway fund in the amount of $1,600. Second. Is there any discussion? This is the d &E. This was tabled at the last yeah. meeting in the state meeting, and they're coming on the 17th for five hours of building on eight hours worth of work. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of paying highway warrant number nine in the amount of $1,600 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? Motion passes. All right. So let's move on then to you should have all gotten kind of money receipts. Okay. And time for it. And Mr. Treasurer, how I are you? I have a question on this. Oh, okay. I'm going to make you have not, not yet, not yet. Okay. Sorry, Joe. We're, we're, we're going to deal with the media first. Then we'll get to you. Okay. I keep looking at the dog license line ever since we had the list of licenses that were not renewed mm -hmm. and have not seen one dog license purchased since then. So can we get an update as to it's It's quite possible that they haven't been able to, to track down any of the... I suspect they have. I, sus I don't know. I no, suspect she, 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 I suspect it processes when she sends them to the state as no, opposed to on a weekly? No, no. Huh? Those, right, those, it is a those, those are entered into the journal okay. as they come in. Okay. There's money across the counter. Yeah, yep. and uh, she would be showing dog license coming in, and it was a breakout for the state and the town. She evidently hasn't claimed any. Um, we get these right before our meetings. A lot of times she won't do them until the end of the month, depending on how active it is. Yep. So my guess is that there hasn't been any, because she's very good about keeping that updated. We can, we can check any more. She may not have any either. Yeah, there, did the, there were... I don't remember. How there were a dozen or so on the way, yeah. I believe. And, and I think a, 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 more than a few came in pretty quick after one, the constable called. And what we, but, I don't, but I don't remember. I, I don't mean, know. I know fact. several of the dogs were deceased, which needs to say there was nothing that came in on them. But right. we, can, we can check with her. Check in the morning. Just see, just see if they're being held or if they maybe. Um, Last week we didn't hear the last Maybe she, meeting, she's taking a these. page out of somebody's uh, clerk's book from up north, and <laughs> I didn't say that. No, you didn't. Anyway, moving on. Maybe she's absconding with the funds, all $9 of it, yeah. The treasurer's treasurer, then. In the uh, sweep account, you have $812,230.07. Plus the thirty thousand in the checking account makes it eight hundred and forty-two thousand two hundred and thirty dollars and seven cents. Okay. And yesterday and today I took in out a hundred and ten thousand dollars to go to the bank tomorrow. Plus the twenty-four thousand I gave the town from the fire department. Yeah, we'll get 37 coming out. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, that'll that'll push us pretty close to 950, 60, somewhere in there. 976. There you go. 876 and 93 cents. Okay, so before good. before tonight's warrants, and yeah. yeah, this is well before the taxes are actually due. Well, um, we have to. We also have to be aware of the fact that the the school. Um, but not until going the 20th of. September. Well, 20 days after the 30th. That's right. It, it got pushed to the 30th. Right, but it'll it'll be the by the by the second meeting second. in September. Right. I mean, it'll middle be of September. Before the second meeting in September. Right. You're going to lose half a million out of it. Right. But by then, we'll be we should be well over. And uh, this chair 
Well, that's part of a bed, all four. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of it's up front as well. Yeah. All right, then was there anything else? Any questions for the treasurer? No? Okay. Then we'll move on to correspondence. I had a letter addressed to Kevin Hayes, chair of the Townsend Select Board, and it says, Dear Miss Hagee, after viewing the tape of your 25 July 17 meeting, I would like to thank you for the statement of appreciation for the work the government uh, for the work of the government's committee. However, given the binary choice you offered the committee, workshop, or thanks for your work, I can only move on to other activities. I will provide the town clerk with hard and or disc copies of the minutes I hold as clerk of the committee, as well as assorted resource documents, and will continue to maintain and publicize the webpage with those documents. My membership in the committee is terminated as of today. Good luck meeting the wishes of the voters express, expressed at last town meeting under a non binding resolution to suspend the rules. That is, Henry Kitt Martin made a non binding motion, which was seconded by Paul Juris to instruct the select board to present to the town a proposal for hiring a town manager, town administrator, including costs and job description, which could be presented to the community at a special warned town meeting. Keep your eye on the ball. Sincerely, Phil Moriarty. Which ball? The ball. The ball. Um, and with that, he turned. And with that, he turned in his notebook and the work product of the committee. His copy, his copy of the work product of the committee, um, with a disc and, and the hard copy. And I would just for for the public record, we do have a workshop scheduled with the committee for this Thursday mm -hmm. to discuss the findings of of the committee and to kind of go over the work and ask any questions that the select board may have, where That's we go from there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I won't be there. That's okay. Yeah, it's solid waste. Yeah, yeah, I got your message yesterday. Did you? It, it really doesn't matter. It's a workshop, so we don't need a no, form okay. of the board. No. That's all. I just want to let you know. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, we, just, we just need to find out where it might go from there. Okay. 6.30, right? Well, 6.30, 30, yes. Yeah. Here. I was still going to be there or not? Nope. No. Nope. Nope. Easy time. Okay. I think that's all of that. Then, moving on to the transfer station. Again, we've already discussed the, what happened today. Mm -hmm. um, there, there are routine trips being made out to kind of observe the... Uh, what's going on and documentation is being kept to what we're observing. So I just wanted to let you know that there is in fact a file where we can, can put any information we might have about what's going right or going wrong. Mm -hmm. I believe, Steve, you've spoken to Arnold? I have. I've, I've made, spoken to him as well. So. I've made six visits since our last meeting. Okay. Actually, every time the transfer station has been open since our last meeting. Your part-time job. My part-time job, yes. Project Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> and, yes, I have had contact. Does he hear you? No, actually, he does not. Which I learned that halfway through asking a question, he's asking me a question, which means he's not hearing me or seeing my lips move. <laughs> that mean he wasn't looking at you? Blind and deaf? Which one? <laughs> So we've talked about the issues with the tie, the zip ties. Another issue that Arnold brought up to me is the sixth grade can drop off area. Right. Yeah. No one's picking them up at this time yeah. of year in between classes. It's what building it is, is building. The fifth grade picks up on it from the sixth grade at the end of like May. And I wouldn't be surprised if they get themselves figured out on a routine. It shouldn't take 12 months to get it figured out. Right. Sixth grade is now seventh, doesn't it? Yeah. There's a, whole, but there are a whole lot of cans and bonds out there right now. Yeah, it's been like that for quite a bit. Yep. Okay. Is there anything else on the transfer station to report? Uh, hopefully, uh, we can get some of these glitches worked out so that we can figure out if we want to continue to do this or whether it is time to just tell these other surrounding communities that got out of the business, tell them how smart they were and, and join the ranks. Uh, it's, it's, it was eye-opening today. 
to have all these people walk in and freely admit they, they were not residents of Townsend and they were using the facility. They, they just say they don't. The they people, didn't know. But the people that are using it during regular hours are behind the bags and they are trying. And I'd say 95, more better than 95, are really trying. They're conscientious about it. Mm -hmm. They're still separating the trash into different. Yeah. And, and that's good. Um, I, I, I think with, with a, a little more stern attention, at least during open working hours, that things can be limited and, and run relatively properly, that the contamination won't be that high. During closed hours, uh, it's anybody's guess. I mean, if they're going to bust the windows in the vehicle, then they're going to dump it away. I mean, it's not, when, when you're shut down, you're shut down. If they're going to jump the fence, they're going to jump the fence. But at least when Arnold's there, again, if, if as you, you know, if you're looking for the hang tag and the hang tag isn't there, that's it. You shut it down. And people, you know, I don't, I don't want to say they should be driving in a column and he should be letting them through a gate, but basically that's what has to happen. Somebody has to look, make sure they're legitimate. Yeah, you just and, send every and if you do that and it's nice weather, uh, the, the thought was originally that, you know, from July 1st through Labor Day, people would understand the system. And basically, most people are pretty good about it. They like the routine. They like a little order and a little discipline. Um, again, I think most people are trying. It's a few percent that aren't. And there are some yeah, violators. And the off hours. And the violators aren't going to be stopped by a banner on the wall saying, you know, you need a sticker right. or a, a hang tag. So, we'll see. No, but that we could certainly... Uh Certainly, yeah. post per, post surveillance notices yeah. as well yeah. that yeah. Uh, put people on notice that we are paying attention to what's going on there after hours and. Uh, right. And as Irv said, we we have an ordinance. Uh, we can revisit that, but again, if it is potentially thing. subject to fine, then we can we can look at that again. Yeah. On the on the it's, kind it's of a solid waste. It's a solid waste. Solid waste. waste. Yeah. 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 Well, like I said, the, the, that, that's what was going on today, and that was at uh, 1 o'clock this afternoon when there was no attendant, there was nobody at the highway garage, and it was just a drive-by from my perspective, and it was, it was pretty eye-opening. Yeah. Okay, um, then moving on to the town report committee, has there been any interest expressed from anybody? No, about that? No, I have not heard any. Okay. No, I put the word out to a few people. I'm going to post the uh, bigger notices around, but I will I post it. vacancy notices that the board is looking. Well, we, we also need to, we're, we have a meeting on Monday with uh, Nimric representative to actually officially close out and answer some of the questions that Craig and I have from 2017. So we can close that year out and actually have numbers to begin to put together this town report. Mm -hmm. uh, what Wait, was that 16? No. 16, 16 is closed, but, 16. At least, but at least go from 16 through 17. Uh, no, 16 okay. is, is the baseline. Right. Base. Okay. And there are some uh, um, unresolved questions. I won't say they're issues, but right. there are unresolved questions with regard to how 17 has closed. It is closed. Okay. Um, but 16 is done when you set taxes, the bills are up, they're yeah. coming in. So 16 is okay. done with them, will be audited on 17, and 17 is ready to go, but there are some, um, those are 1%, <laughs> needs final adjustment, needs understanding, something. Okay. We'll, we'll get that, we'll get that hammered out. This so, month. what we do need to try Next to get this weeks. committee into place once we get the, those yeah, numbers right. finalized, because it does take a while to, to right. harass people into providing their reports on time and, and uh, to chase them down, to actually do the layout of the town report. It has to go to the printer, Roughly the first of January. So, but it's, I mean, it's tough. I mean, the the first quarter taxes are barely dribbling in. We haven't spent any money other than on maintenance, summer maintenance, and and uh, payroll and vacations and whatnot. Um, but it's hard to think that in, in sixty days you guys will be sitting down looking at next year's budget for the next eighteen months and not knowing where we are and looking at buying vehicles and sand and salt and diesel fuel and all the rest of it again. Uh, you know, kind of first of October, you got to be geared up for it, and by November, start having real numbers on pages. Okay, then all of you in your boxes, one of the things uh, Steve had asked to be produced were some sample uh, job description. Yes. Job performance uh, 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 There were two of them that were found. I think one Craig found one, and Will found the other one. Will found the good one. The MIT? <laughs> yeah. Yep. I'm yeah, sorry. I thought I thought it was nice. I thought it was easily modifiable. Yeah. It's quantitative, so it's easy to tally. Yeah. It doesn't require a lot of writing. 
And I'd Which I think everybody will enjoy. I'd leave MIT right at the top. <laughs> I mean, the, the question becomes, um, I'm, this is the first time I've never seen these, but we might want to take a look at them and at the, if there's any questions about the format or whatnot, we might just stick that on the agenda for the, the workshop on Tuesday, just if nothing else, Thursday. There's a, Thursday. excuse me, Thursday, if there's any questions that we need answered before we, we can make a decision, we can... We and if you have any suggestions on it, how to customize it, how to modify it to make it, I mean, so that it's either particular or generic, one way or the other. Mm -hmm. It should be useful for all employees, but it can be customized for just highway crew and then others. Um, right. however, however you want to do it, but if you have any suggestions or instructions for me, I can type up a draft and I can add those in and we can, you can play, you know, cut and paste from there. Yeah, I think try to get the same a job. general template with some department specific. You try to get it hammered out by try to get hammered out maybe by next meeting or whenever you want this, or mm -hmm. not however you want to make, maybe push this forward. Well, I mean, did you want to try to go back and pick up this last year, or are we going? We do want to go back and pick up this. Year? I suggest we do. Okay. But then we're going to have that it puts more of a uh, emphasis on getting this done as opposed to having the time. So we have the, the evaluations ready when we begin to set budgets for in October. Right. Minutes of 2012, was there something in there? About evaluation? I don't know, I've got to go back to them. Just out of here, maybe I'll look at them. Uh, I think there was. But I don't remember where because it wasn't in the right one. Uh, that was Colbert and Wyndham Hill. No, gosh, if I missed it. No. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, just you can pass that around if you want. You don't have to read it out loud. Yeah. I, I just, I just, uh, deja vu all over again. And deja again, vu again. all over again, yes. And again and again. Yeah. yeah. I will pass that around just for everybody. You put a little star next to it or something. Okay. Anyway. Um, the, uh, so we'll, if you have any suggestions or questions about that, we might want to come prepared with those, not to actually get anything accomplished, but to have Craig uh, have a list of what we... Well, I can, yeah, like I say, I can just throw it on a piece of paper and draft one. You, right. can, you can move things around or, or just see how it works. Sometimes in black and white it looks a little different. Mm -hmm. All right, then the next item on the agenda is the use of the town common. And I'm, I'm putting my thoughts together. Um, it came to my attention multiple times last week that we had heavy vehicles on the common setting up the booths for fair days. Mm. Uh, we had a one-ton truck and a low boy trailer that was carrying the old wooden booths that they, they put up. Uh, they began putting them up on the Thursday. Prior to the prior, fair. No, oh, nine days prior to the fair. That was, oh yeah, it was. It was. It was. I, I remember, remember thinking, wow. There was a concert, there was a concert that weekend by Valley Cures fundraiser. Uh, and all the booths were in the um, So, so there was a, a fair amount of activity on the common, a fair amount of driving around from spot to spot. There didn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to how these vehicles were moving. Mm -hmm. um, and it brought up the whole issue of things like soil compaction mm -hmm. around the roots of the trees. Uh, well, and there's the grass. The grass that's now now dead be, color, yeah. because the uh, the booths were up so long, so they're sunlight yeah. deprived. Um, we also had issues with, I believe, a breakage. There was a broken um, there was a broken branch in the back of the, the truck, maple. and we found out where that got broken from. On well, one of the maple trees, um, and I it, it started a discussion um, both with Craig and I over the fact that there is a policy for the use of the town hall, mm -hmm. and there is a, a fee for the use of the town hall. And uh, I think it's, no, right now oh, I'm talking, right, oh, I'm talking oh, about oh. the hall. 
Um, it, it seems to make sense that for some of these larger venues that, that come in and are occupying the common for nine days, that there should not be, at that point in time, it's not really available to the public, the, the people to use, because it's, it's dedicated to the entity. I think there needs to be some kind of rules about what can happen, about driving the vehicles there, possibly, or certainly uh, damage to the trees, which, I mean, multiple people look at yeah. the fact that they stapled posters to my trees. Now, Irv, you remember the day when they got busy with the staples and what happened? Yeah, right. <laughs> One of the things that we've also done over the years is the common fund, which was set up the last time the trees died, uh, has been used for their maintenance over and over over the years, to the betterment of the common, but that fund is becoming depleted. Right. Mm -hmm. And I really think that it's time to consider having a policy that begins to ask the people who want to use the commons for these events and potentially are damaging it or whatever to contribute to that fund for the mowing, for the fertilization of the trees, to aerate the, the ground so, after uh, these events when so many people were there. With the rain that we had, that ground, once it dries out, is going to be as hard as a rock. Yeah. Because it was, there's just so many people there. So I, I don't expect us to sit down and hammer out a policy tonight. But I, I do think that we need to, mm -hmm. to deal with some kind of a fee for use. Yep. Um, one of the other issues that we found throughout the summer months is our electric use goes up because they tap into the meter that yep. is on Route 35. Uh, the hospital has their own meter, which is on Route 30. And they use that for the pumpkin festival, I believe, as well. I'm not certain. But we do have an old, what they call a telephone booth meter, mm -hmm. which is on the Route 30 side, that they do use it. It also runs, I believe, the gazebo. Right. So it... Yeah, what feeds the fountain and the gazebo. Oh, does it both? Yeah, I think it's a good idea. If nothing else, like, just have a policy. I mean, it should be common sense that you load from the we, road, you don't you know drive saying? across it's, the town. It's been advocated for quite a while. But yeah, but it's, been, it's been a couple of years that I read that meter before they had hospital day. And they had kicked in whatever the electricity they used. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but yeah, I, it's, I, get, it's getting more con it's getting a little more confusing now with all the net metering and the credits and all of that that comes back on it. Yeah. But um, it's been advocated that the board at least have a policy for the use of the common and that everybody, absolutely everybody, be charged at the discretion of the board at least a dollar to use the common. And it, especially if it's a fundraiser or something. But if you're having even if you're having a wedding or a child's birthday party or something, you should pay, everybody should pay a little something in toward it. And if it's a big operation and you're making tens of thousands of dollars and you're going to use the common for a week, you know, it ought to be enough to at least cover the cost of, of uh, uh, recovery, preparation, receiving, right. receiving whatever, and prepping. The issue with the truck uh, was, was fairly... Uh, confounded by the fact that the, the booths go on the outside and it's easy enough to unload the truck from the road and put the booths on the edge of the common from the outside instead of driving crisscross across the common back and forth with a truck and a trailer. And it seemed that the people that were doing a lot of the setup weren't physically able to carry them the 10 feet from the road to where they needed to go. They needed to park, you know, at one end of the booth and then the other end of the booth to put up the different ends. Um, it just got to be a lot of traffic. On yeah, we could have Kurt, Bob, and Ed help them next year. Well, <laughs> we've had our truck. We've had our trucks on the common a number of times too, mm -hmm. and and I don't know that that's a good setting a good example. Um, well, just just something to think about if, as we try to hammer out this policy is: should there be a, a time limitation on what, how long things can be on the grass? Other other towns do have policies. Kathy well, sets I mean, up. I, I Kathy that. sets up for the Heritage Festival, I believe, and mentioned last week something about their policy. Their policy basically is the big tent that they use for food is on the common the day before and that the booths that are set up by the individuals cannot be on the common until four o'clock on Friday afternoon and have to be off of the common by um, five, five or 5.30 on Sunday. Yeah. So in other words- So you don't have nine days. Now do they use a specific staple to staple the 
the uh, stuff on the trees down there? Or do they I, use, I, I think do they you, use 16 penny galvanized nails? They're wooden staples. I, I, I honestly I thought an air nail would probably do. I, I think new thing would probably come unglued more than, than we do mm. with the trees because they just replanted their whole common. So I can well, why don't we test it and go down well, we and staples go, go and stuff it, on and see what, see what goes on. That's the courthouse though, they, well, they, We can do it when they're, we're bringing the recycling back. Yeah, take it back. Don't bring it common. But I mean, and that's not an unreasonable policy. And, and if there's an ex needs to be an exception, then somebody can petition for the exception. Right. Um, and and there's you know a laundry list of, of things that you would want. You want insurance. You want you know traffic regulation and those kinds of things to attend any kind of um, festivities. Um, but basically, the board should be in a position to grant permission. It should, even though it's open to the public at all times. If you uh, an, uh, an organization that's using it for its own purposes, even if philanthropic. Um, yeah. should have to ask the public or their representatives, the select board, for basically for permission to use it. Well, I think one of the things they absolutely will not, will not allow on the Newfane Courthouse lawn is a vehicle. Mm -hmm. It better be an emergency with lights and sirens, etc., before they would, a fire truck type situation before right. they would allow a vehicle onto the common So you carry everything in? And carry you absolutely right. carry it all in. Whether you're in the middle of the group, which is where I am, or whether you're on the outside edge, you mm -hmm. carry it, you love it. Yeah, but they, only, they didn't have that much in the middle for a booth or anything. No, they I mean, didn't. They, 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 have they drove across instead of parking on the road. No, no, they had theirs. They had, they had their raffle booth was dead center, right in front of the elementary school. T-shirt booth. And the t-shirt booth. Mm -hmm. So they, the big old booths that are made of wood are the ones that they were dragging around and, and setting up. And they're, they're literally all over the company. And those, are, and those are pretty heavy, and there are a lot of them to set up. So I mean, I sympathize with them. It's a lot of work, and the volunteers do a, a, a major effort to, yeah, to set them up. They yeah. used to sign on, I think, Wednesday. Of that same week. Of the same week, but it got so that they don't have the help. Well, a lot of people are being paid, and it, it, it you know flies in the face of the volunteers that are helping. But some people are being that even that's, that's that's their business. Um, no, the volunteers are getting scared. But it's but it's someone was saying. I mean, these knockdown booths that basically they they're just a tent. You catch them, you put some stakes on the ground, and they're done. Canvas top. I mean, they're not that expensive to buy, but the old wooden booths are they're getting old, and they need to be replaced. I mean, what and they, they could be replaced with something more efficient. A deep shadow. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, and they leave a, they leave a pretty heavy footprint on Right, the exactly. Wet or dry, they leave a pretty heavy. If anybody looked at the common in the last couple of days, I did. Um, yeah. You can still see where the you can see exactly where everyone was. The one of the other issues that 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 came up when we going back to the trees. I was on a I was on a tree roll this last weekend. Um, is that the hired tent company that put up the auction tent? on the common actually used one of the trees to secure the tent by roping it. <coughs> Which again is not something that should that should be done. Those yeah. trees those trees are not there to be stuck. Yeah, if you looked up from the statement posters you could see the ropes. Yeah. Yeah. I sat and stared at it all day. At least you just used a rope on like a hook and eye or something. Well it could have. <laughs> you could have screwed it right into the tree for all I know. The black bolt? Yeah. So yes, but I, we, we lucked out. I looked at that one over. I don't know if they go May booth over from the school. Okay. Food or clothes? There's a water line under that. Going across that it goes to fountain. <laughs> Not that deep either, is it? No, yeah. it's only about that deep. So yeah, you're driving, what, you're driving what, tent stakes in that. Yeah, well, what the heck? One time, I can't remember just what year it was, but they drove one of them steel pegs. When they set up on a tent right through the water line. Well, like I said, the tent, the tents that were put up for the auction itself literally went from tree to tree because they on on one end of it, on the people end of it, so to speak, uh, they were roped off to the tree, and then they were right beside that little one I was talking to Kurt about uh, that's got the huge scar on it now on the other end. So yes, they're they're as they expand and they expand their footprint. They're taking up more and more of the available land as well. Mm -hmm. So I do think it's time to, to start yeah. thinking about what kind of restrictions we would like to put on the common uh, for events. That wasn't a small fishing vessel that was uh, no, that just was on display. Big yeah, yeah, yeah. Fishing trip, whatever that was. That was a big boat. Yeah. Okay. Um, so 
I kind of like to perhaps we pull something together if we can find a, a common policy from one of the other towns mm -hmm. and begin there so we don't have to completely reinvent the yeah. wheel and move forward on that. So I'll take a look, see if I can find anything and anybody else who might stumble across yeah. a policy. Uh, you know, just send it on to Craig so that we can pass them out and have a discussion about what we want to do. And I will say, I, I spoke to, when it was brought by a and that a, a branch was broken, I spoke to the workers on the field one day. I called the administration at the hospital that same day, left a message, got a call back from an administrator, and then went back two days later or one day later? Two days later. And they were still on the common driving on it, even after the, I, I'd spoken to them about doing so. So it's not going to do any good to just be soft-handed. Just to No, and taking everything down, they were driving all over the common to pick everything up. So, I mean, and that was after the heavy rain on Saturday. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, it, it is what it is. And I, 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 again, I don't think people are malicious or anything like that. They're just not thinking it through. But they're also not heeding advice because it's more expedient to not do it. Um, I do think the policy would, would mm -hmm. help in the long run. Uh, in the long and if nothing else, it sets, the, it sets the expectations going in so that there are no surprises when one of us drives by and says, hey, could you move the truck off the grass? So, you know, it's if we had put the raised garden beds in, we could have strategically oh, yeah, put them and they exactly. wouldn't be able to get over them. You can't put them on the new lines. I know. Yeah, yeah. We just have lightened up and let them do it. All along the way. Of which, you've got some concrete barriers along Route 35, right at 30, that probably need to be replaced. And they still have rewrites sticking up that high. Yeah. Out of them. You know, that that little, that we had a couple of, well, you and I went over and looked at some, you remember that one? Was the that car? Eight right? years ago? I can't remember. Maybe. Yeah, it was it. Anyway, so is there any other business? How long ago was that? Two years. years. Two years. Grab two winners. And gravel on the shoulders in front of her so I can't remember that either. Yeah, it's been a while. No other, no other business? No, uh, is there any need for an executive session? I can't think of one. All right, then I'll just list the, the meetings that we have coming up. We have well, the fine. workshop on Thursday at 6.30 here. Uh, we had, and that was that was for the select board and the governance committee to discuss their findings. We have a BCA meeting to purge the voter checklist on August sixteenth, six p.m. here. And we we are automatic members of the BCA. Thursday. And then the next regular meeting is August twenty second here. So and looking forward toward Labor Day, there is a meeting in West, I'm sorry, in Broward, uh, Rescue Center and RSVP invitation now. Uh, or members of Select Court, yep. Um, those of the emails should have gone out to Zoom and you have a copy. Um, he missed the paper. Huh? No, he asked Prime Rick Jenner and said no, he missed the paper. Oh, okay. I have already RSVP for that, oh. by the way. The Prime Rick? Yes. Yeah. Okay, hearing nothing else, I would entertain a motion to adjourn at 7.30. Oh, okay, 7.40. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. second. Who made the motion? Irv. Irv. Yep. Yeah. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Stand We're adjourned. Thank you. I'm not opposed.